Now that we're able to use the chain rule in order to calculate more complex derivatives, we are actually ready to answer a deeper question about finding derivatives. And that's for finding derivatives around functions, or not functions, but relations between x and y that are more complex than a function. This would include things like circles, ellipses, hyperbolas, or more complex uh, graphs and non-functions that do not pass the vertical line test. So the question is going to be, how do we take the derivative if it is not a function of x? In other words, it's going to fail the vertical line test. It's not a function. And everything we've done thus far has been all predicated on the idea of a function. And so what we're going to have to do is if it's not a function, we're going to have to use what's called implicit differentiation. And the idea with implicit differentiation is we're going to have a function where y is a function of x. We don't know what it is, or it's too complex for us to work with. And so we'll just take the derivative of y times the derivative of what's inside it. And the derivative of y we know is just dy dx. So in summary, we can use the chain rule with this idea that the derivative of y with respect to x is dy dx. But of course, dy dx is what we're trying to find. What is the derivative of y with respect to x? And so what we will then do is we will then solve for dy dx. And generally, dy dx will be a linear function. So we'll be able to get all the dy dx's on one side, factor out dy dx, and divide by whatever it's multiplied by. But to get an idea of what this looks like, let's start with a simple example. Just a basic circle with a radius of 6 has the equation x squared plus y squared equals 36. And just kind of to draw a picture off to the side, we won't normally do this, but just to get an idea of what we're talking about here is we've got a circle with a radius of 6. And the idea is that we could, in theory, come up with a tangent line to this circle that touches at one point. And we could put that tangent line anywhere on the circle. And so what we want to do is come up with what is the equation of the slope of that tangent line. What is dy dx? But we can't do it by our traditional means because this thing is not a function. It does not pass the vertical line test because it's going to a vertical line will cross the graph twice. So because it doesn't pass the vertical line test, because it's not a function, we will take the derivative implicitly which means we're going to use this idea of the chain rule whenever we come across a y. So first, the derivative of x squared is 2x plus the derivative of y squared. Now, keeping in mind the chain rule, we're going to treat the y like it's the inside stuff. And so the derivative of y squared is 2y, but we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. And the derivative of y is dy dx equals, we'll do the same thing on the other side. The derivative of 36 is 0. And now I've got something that I can solve for the dy dx. To solve for the dy dx, we'll subtract 2x from both sides, and we have 2y dy dx equals negative 2x. Get the y by itself, or the dy dx by itself, by dividing by 2y, and we get negative 2x over 2y. Or by reducing out the 2's, we have dy dx 
is equal to negative x over y. So the slope of the tangent line of this circle is negative x over y. We would then know from our point what x and y are, and we'd be able to find the slope at any given point. Now, that was a simple example. These examples can quickly increase in complexity as we combine quotient rules and product rules and chain rules and all the other rules we've seen. So let's try several of these examples. Uh, we'll do two more examples where we're just solving for dy dx, and then we'll also look at how we can find the equation of these tangent lines. So first, we're going to look at x cubed y squared minus the sine of x equals the tangent of y. To take the derivative implicitly, because solving for y would be a headache, we'll take the derivative of the first part here. We notice we've got a product, the x squared times the y squared. So we will use the product rule. The derivative of x cubed is 3x squared times the second part, which is y squared, plus the derivative of the second part, which is 2y dy dx, and I'll just put that in parentheses so we can see what we're solving for, times the first part, which is x cubed. Now that we've used the product rule, we keep going down our function. The derivative of negative sine is negative cosine of x equals the derivative of tangent is secant squared of y, but times the derivative of the inside. Whenever we take the derivative with the y, we have to multiply by dy dx. Now we just have to solve for the dy dx. To do that, we're going to get all the dy dx's on one side. So I'm going to move that 2y dy dx. That's a terrible y. The 2y dy dx times x cubed, we're going to move that to the left side. So we now have 3x squared. It should be green. 3x squared y squared minus the cosine of x equals the secant squared of y times dy dx minus 2yx cubed times the dy dx. And then, because the dy dx is on both terms, we're able to factor that out, dy dx times the secant squared of y minus 2yx cubed is still equal to, the other side's unchanged, 3x squared y squared minus cosine x. And so to get the dy dx alone, we just divide by everything it's multiplied by. And so now we can say that dy dx, the derivative or slope of the tangent line of this relationship is 3x squared y squared minus cosine x divided by what was multiplied by the dy dx, the secant squared y minus 2yx cubed. And that's how we can use this idea of implicit differentiation. We just keep taking the derivative of both sides. And then whenever we come across a y, we're going to multiply by the derivative of y using the chain rule, which is dy dx. Let's look at another. Let's say we have xy plus x over y equals y times the square root of 2x plus 1. One thing that's going to help us make this derivative a little easier is uh, the x over y, we can rewrite that y with a negative exponent. So we can just use the product rule instead of the quotient rule, which is much simpler. Also, the square root. The easiest way to take a derivative with the square root is to change that to a fractional exponent of 1 half. And then we can just use our exponent rules. So let's rewrite this problem as xy plus xy to the negative 1 equals y times 2x plus 1 
to the 1 half power. Now we're going to have to use several product rules here. So you want to make sure you keep track of each part because we've got a product at the beginning. Actually, let me do this in green so it stands out a little more. A product at the beginning, a product in the middle, and a product at the end, which is going to require us to use the chain rule. So the first product, x times y, derivative of the first, the derivative of x is 1 times y, plus the derivative of the second, the derivative of y is dy dx times the first, which is x, plus the derivative of x is 1 times the second, y to the negative 1, plus the derivative of the second, the derivative of y to the negative 1. We bring the negative out front, so instead of plus, we actually have minus y to the negative 2 times dy dx, because we were taking a derivative with y, times the first, which is x, equals. We have another product. The derivative of the first part, the derivative of y is dy dx times the second part, which is 2x plus 1 to the 1 half, plus the derivative of the second part, which is 1 half times 2x plus 1 to the negative 1 half. But now we have to use our chain rule because the derivative of the 2x plus 1, the inside stuff, is 2. Now we can multiply by the derivative by the first part. Looking at this uh, ugly thing that we have, a couple things to simplify. We've got a times 2 and a divide by 2. Those are going to reduce out, which is nice, so we don't have to deal with the fraction. Other than that, what we're going to want to do is get all of these dy dx terms. There's one right here, dy dx times x. We've got a negative y to the negative 2, dy dx times x. And we've also got a dy dx multiplied by the 2x plus 1 to the 1 half. Let's move all the dy dx's to the right and everything else to the left. So on the left, we've still got the y plus y to the negative 1. And then we'll subtract out that term at the end, the 2x plus 1 to the negative 1 half times y. And I'm just going to put that y in front equals, we've got a dy dx multiplied by the 2x plus 1 to the 1 half. We have to also subtract off the dy dx, which is multiplied by the x. And we're also going to add, to get rid of the minus, a y to the negative 2 x times dy dx. Now that we've got the dy dx's on the right, the everything else on the left, we can factor out the dy dx, which leaves us with 2x plus 1 to the 1 half minus x plus y to the negative 2x. The other side's unchanged. y plus y to the negative 1 minus y times 2x plus 1 to the negative 1 half. That's a terrible 2. There we go. And then finally, we get the dy dx alone by dividing both sides by what it's multiplied by, giving us y plus y to the negative 1 minus y times 2x plus 1 to the negative 1 half all over the 2x plus 1 to the 1 half minus x plus y to the negative 2 times x. And now we have implicitly found our 
derivative. Keeping along with this same idea, I want to add to it a little twist, something we're very familiar with. And that is finding the equation of the tangent line. So that equation of the tangent line, same idea. Let's start with x cubed y plus 5x squared y equals negative 28. And we're going to find the equation of the tangent line at the point 2 comma negative 1. First, we need to find the slope of the tangent line. And then it's going to be really easy to find the actual equation. To find the slope, we take the derivative. We've got a couple products. We're getting really good at the product rule here. So we've got 3x squared times y plus the derivative of y is dy dx times the x cubed plus, for the second product, the derivative of the first part is 10x times the y plus the derivative of the second, which is a dy dx times the first part, which is 5x squared, equals the derivative of negative 28 is just 0. Now solving for the dy dx's, they're all on one side, which is nice. So we just need to get rid of the other stuff. So we've got a dy dx times x cubed plus a dy dx times 5x squared is equal to negative 3x squared y minus 10xy, moving those things without dy dx to the other side, so that we can factor out the dy dx, leaving behind x cubed plus 5x squared equals the negative 3x squared y minus 10xy. Now we can divide by what dy dx is multiplied by. So we know that dy dx is equal to negative 3x squared y minus 10xy over the x cubed plus 5x squared. We want that derivative at the point 2 comma negative 1. So we'll plug 2 in for all of these x's. We'll plug negative 1 in for the y. So we have negative 3 times x, which is 2 squared, times y, which is negative 1, minus 10 times x, which is 2, times y, which is negative 1, all over x cubed. x is 2 cubed plus 5x squared, which is 2 squared. And this is not too bad to plug in to our handy dandy calculators. Um, let's just do the numerator and the denominator so it's a fraction and it looks kind of slope-esque. We've got negative 3 times 2 squared times negative 1 minus 10 times 2 times negative 1. So the numerator is 32 over our denominator, which is 2 cubed plus 5 times 2 squared, which is 28. Both of those are divisible by 4. 32 divided by 4 is 8, and 28 divided by 4 is 7. So 8 sevenths is equal to our slope at the point 2 comma negative 1. So the equation of the tangent line, y equals m, my slope 8 sevenths, times x minus x1, which is 2, plus the y1, which is negative 1, the equation of our tangent line of this ugly function is 8 sevenths x minus 2 minus 1. 
Let's do one more example. It's got a trig function in it. Number two, cosine of xy equals y. And we're going to find the equation of the tangent line at pi over 3, comma, 1. We'll do this implicitly because it's almost impossible to solve for y. At least it would be quite tedious. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine of xy. Using the chain rule, we multiply by the derivative of what's inside. We want to make sure we multiply by the entire derivative. And because we have to use the product rule, there's going to be a plus. So I'm going to put this in parentheses to remind me to distribute the negative sign through the parentheses. The derivative of x is just 1 times the y, which is y, plus the derivative of y is our dy dx times the x. And that's equal to the derivative of y, which we know is dy dx. We want to solve for the dy dx. We first have to get it out of the parentheses, so we're going to distribute that negative sine xy through. That gives us negative y sine of xy minus x sine of xy times dy dx equals dy dx. We want to get the dy dx's all on the same side. So we'll add that x sine xy to both sides, giving us negative y sine of xy equals dy dx plus x sine of xy dy dx. Once they're all on one side, we can factor out dy dx, leaving behind a 1. Don't forget the 1. It doesn't just disappear. Plus x sine of xy, still equal to negative y sine of xy. Finally, to get the dy dx alone, we divide both sides by what it's multiplied to get our final derivative, negative y sine of xy divided by 1 plus x sine of xy equals dy dx. We want the slope, though, or we want the equation at pi over 3 comma 1. So let's plug that into our function. We got negative y, which is negative 1, times the sine of x times y. 1 times pi over 3 is just pi over 3, all over 1 plus x, which is pi over 3, times the sine of xy, which is pi over 3. And if we remember our unit circle, i over 3, the y coordinate there is the square root of 3 over 2. So we have negative root 3 over 2 over 1 plus pi over 3 times, again, the sine of pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. And I don't like having those fractions and fractions. So let's clear out those fractions and fractions. We've got a common denominator of 6. I'm going to multiply by 6 and distribute that 6 through. 6 over 2 will reduce to 3. So we have negative 3 root 3 over 6 plus 3 times 2 is 6, which will reduce to the 6. So that's pi root 3. And it looks weird and ugly, but sure enough, it is our derivative. So we have y equals our slope, which is negative 3 root 3 
over 6 plus pi root 3 times x minus the x coordinate, which is pi over 3, plus our y coordinate, which is 1. And this is the equation of the line that is tangent to cosine xy equals y. So that's implicit differentiation. The idea behind implicit differentiation is that we just take the derivative of both sides of the equation using the chain rule, knowing that the derivative of y is dy dx, because y is a function of x. It's not just a variable. It is a function of x. So we use our chain rule and multiply by the derivative of y. Then we just have to solve the resulting equation for dy dx. Looking forward to seeing you in class when we can work on this a little bit more. Give yourself some time to practice before then, and we'll see you in class.